Hello and welcome to the C++ and Science YouTube channel, where I will teach you various topics around C++. I'm your host, Andreas Fertig, a trainer and consultant for C++. I'm available for in-house, on-site or remote training. In this episode, I like to illustrate why reference qualifiers, as we got them with C++11, can be beneficial for some data types. Have a look at the following code here. It's a, well, very downstream example. Let's say we are looking at something like a database where we have this function here, entry add, where I can receive an entry. You can see the database is totally bogus, but that doesn't matter. Entry add returns us a reference to a storage object. Down there in main, Somebody created the database object, DB, and then I have two different kinds of users. The first one, well, I would say they're more expressive, at least in my view. They call db.entryAd with the specific index, the position in the database they want to get an entry back, and they assign it to a reference of type storage. And after that, they assign a new value to that entry at this position. And because there's a reference, we modify the data inside the database, which is the goal here. Now, other people might use a single line solution. They call db.entryAd at a position two and directly assign object of storage to this reference. And by that also changing the data inside the database. So both ways are fine, both ways work. Now let's say that for some reason the database design changes. We can no longer return the entry add as a reference. So we introduce another function, something like set add, where we can set data position. And entry add now returns us a storage object and no longer reference to a storage object. As you can see, my code now stops immediately compiling. And this might be something I'm looking for as the engineer making this change because these errors help me to spot all the places where people expected a reference and now no longer get one. So this is the hard error I want to get. So my code in A here is no longer compliant with the new API. And that's a good thing. But if I remove these two lines of code, my code starts compiling again. Line 28 here in B, it compiles just fine. It simply has no effect because entry add now returns a new object and because it's on the left side of this operation, it's a temporary in that case where I assign a new temporary object to. So I'm creating two temporary objects, assign one to the other, creating a whole lot of void and I have no real effect on the database which I did have before. The solution in B, or the approach in B, that does not get catched by my change. So it's, it's hard to spot. And despite that I'm now illustrating this by saying I make a change to the API, this is something that can accidentally happen even if the API always was that way. So we just overlooked the fact that we are not getting a reference back here. So we can write this code and it compiles, but it doesn't do anything. That's bad. We can change that. We can make this stop compiling and by that help users identify places where they're assigned to a temporary object. And we do this by saying, okay, in storage now, we implement our own, in this case, simply copy assignment operator. That's the simplest case here. And since I have no intention of implementing an assignment operator, I default it. Well, it is just the same as before. It doesn't change anything. But as I said, we have ref qualifiers. So what I can now say is I provide my copy assignment operator only for L values. So where we do not have a temporary object. And now you can see that my code stops compiling. It now says, oh, you try to assign something here, but the operator you're trying to invoke is not viable for the kind of object you're using it with. 
So this is something how you can reel these cases. And well, now I have to stop using that code as well. When we are returning a reference, my change here has no effect. It would work as before, but once we start return an object now here, or for every function that returns an object, the two assignments to temporary now no longer work for two different reasons. Line number eight here, this is what I'm trying to teach you. Consider making the assignment operators, the copy assignment and the move assignment, L value only. I hope you learned something that might help you prevent some bugs in your code. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.